Hello, everybody. Happy Friday. You're watching this on Friday morning, February 4th, 2022. I'm here with my girls, Stephanie and Taylor, for the second time this week. We're going to be answering some of your questions or whether, excuse me, or rather they are going to be answering some of your questions. Um, but before we get started, there's a couple of things we want to address. Um, so I've addressed this before, especially with yoga. We know that there's a lot of like Sorry, my dog's in the room with me, guys. So you might hear him scratching, barking. He is getting very gassy right now. So if you see my face change, it's because of him. Um, his, his girlfriend, his girlfriend, Catherine Edwards, his girlfriend, has got him on a diet. So his body is, uh, is definitely taking a moment to adjust to... Uh, to this diet and he used to not be that gassy but lord have mercy <laughs> Let's just oh, say no he's, he's keeping the demons out um, so if y'all see my face change it's probably because he's expressing himself so <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway so back to what we were talking about there i've talked about this before on my show because we know that I'm very um, anal retentive when it comes to proper yoga because most of the yoga, 99% of the yoga that you see in the Western world is a complete joke compared to what yoga really is. And a lot of it is taught wrong. All right, y'all, if you ever go to a yoga teacher or a, spirit or a spiritualist who does this, do mm -hmm. not go back to them. This is not a mudra. This is not a mudra. It's this. So if they're doing this, that either means they don't have any type of education or any type of teaching, which every spiritualist needs a teacher to guide them or to help them to show them what to do. They either don't have a teacher, so you don't need to be going to them, or they absolutely don't respect the lineage of, of what this actually means. Because the palms, the tips of your finger, your, your palms all have different energies connected to them. And that's why you're pressing the palms down. So this is actually the joining of God and man. All right. It's that. That's the joining of God and man. That's that mudra. All right. So I just wanted to clear that up because I've gotten that question a lot before and I have covered it once before, but never hurts to repeat something. Sorry, he's being very loud right now. I don't know if you guys can hear him. But um, second thing is for anybody watching this right now who has sent me a text message and I didn't respond, chances are I didn't get it. So I, last time we were together, girls, we spoke about how our YouTubes were being messed with. Well, apparently so is my cell phone. Apparently so is my cell phone. So um, there's actually another friend I have in the Truther community that I've been trying to get in contact with, and he did not get my text messages, all that kind of stuff. So um, I just, I feel bad because if you have tried to get in touch with me and I didn't respond, that's why I didn't get it. So I'm not ignoring you. I'm not, please know that. Like, that's just, that's what happened. So anyway, all right. So with that being said, are all, are, how are you ladies doing today, by the way? Even though we've been on for like an hour before we actually started recording, but how are y'all doing today? <laughs> Tired. It's raining here, so I don't have a lot of energy today, but I'm going to make it work. Yeah, I'm good. I'm chilling. <laughs> chilling. <laughs> One day at a time, bro. So ready for this to be over i know everybody is we're so we're so we're with you guys we're so ready for it for the tower moment to come so all right so hopefully this will cheer us all up though because i know you ladies love reading your cards and hopefully we're going to get some really awesome questions because as i said before one thing i really appreciate about appreciate about stephanie and um taylor is how thorough they tap into these these questions um and so and i feel like you guys do a very loving job at you know responding so Let's get started. So the first question is from a woman named Donna Buchanan. I love what the three of you are doing. You raise my frequency. Thank you, Donna. You raise our frequency as well. I would love to know what message the universe has for me. I left a 25-year career which no longer resonates, and I find myself drawn to many new topics of study from growing food, medicine, tarot, astrology, numerology, crystals, and so many more. Would love to know what I should be focusing my energies on to best prepare my next role moving forward also if you have any advice on how to connect with my higher self i would deeply appreciate it sending you all love and thanks for everything you do well donna one thing that helps you get in touch with your higher self is having a pendulum board 
mean, I can put a link to where I got Stephanie and I have the same board. So I can put a link and Catherine now has this Edwards has this board as well. I can send you a link to this board. But one thing I'll say is when you use the pendulum board, you have to always ask permission first to speak to even your higher self. I'm going to do a video on actually how to use one. Oh, perfect. I've been planning on doing that for a couple of weeks now and I just haven't gotten around to and I was kind of, um, I guess, meditating on the right way to go about it just because with great power comes great responsibility. And if you're tapping into certain things using a board, you really have to make sure you're using it properly. Absolutely. Um, so it's something that I've been very led to do um, just because I think a lot of people are using it incorrectly or without the proper intentions. It's yes. all about your intention. Yeah. Yes. And, and you always need to make sure it's like for your highest good, for the collective's highest good, you know, checking it like three times just to make sure. Um, but yeah, that'd be awesome, Stephanie. So what I'll do, guys, is I'll put a link to the uh, to where to get this board because um, I love this board. Stephanie's got the same board and now Catherine Edwards has the same board. Um, but then also, Stephanie, once you make that video, I'll share it on my community tab as well. Okay. That sounds good. Wonderful. That's a wonderful idea. The other thing with the higher self or the highest self for the highest good is, um, well, I have like a lot of visualizations I do, but which could help. But the other thing is that first response feeling. Sometimes we have these moments where we get a first hit or that first knowing, and that's your subconscious. And then the conscious mind comes in and it says, no, no, you're crazy. No, no, that's not real. That's the conscious mind. The subconscious is the one that allows and flows. And normally it's your first response. You can even get used to having like asking yourself yes or no questions. Cause that's like the easiest way to start. Right? So you ask yourself, um, yes or no questions and you get that first hit. It's like, yes. But then logically you're like, but this doesn't add up. This doesn't add up. This doesn't add up. But like starting to really trust that first inner knowing that first message that comes in and starting with yes or no is a really good way to do it too. But yeah, that's how I do higher self work. Awesome. I actually think Donna kind of intuitively knows in what she's wishing for, because that's a wishing card intuition. Um, but I feel like she's not going to quite know exactly what she wants to do or what she should be doing until we're walking away from the old system. So I almost feel like it's something that might not quite exist yet, um, but it's going to come really, really fast. And then um, it's like, she's going to put away anything that no longer uh, connects with her. And it's like, she's a very strong empress. So she's very like, um, she's, what's the word I'm trying to look for? Taylor, help me out. I know, I know it's, I know it's in your head too. I'm trying to Auburn. figure out the what sovereign and i like when i'm looking at the the empress card it's like that divine feminine energy like very spiritual very powerful feminine energy yeah so i almost almost get like a healer some of some kind but maybe not exactly what we would look at as a healer right now but it's like those gifts will come online at the correct moment of when we go into the new earth yeah and I got that too. I got connected with the earth too, with your Empress card, but I also got the world card, um, new cycles coming in. Also, I did want to say congratulations about leaving a 25 year job. I feel like it was a long time coming and I think they put a lot of pressure on you. So it was always something in the back of your mind. Like I want to leave. This is the end of this cycle. Uh, 10 of wands is all about everything on your shoulders. So you might've noticed that it wasn't an equal exchange of energy. So I want to affirm for you too, that as you're tapping into all these beautiful aspects of yourself that are literally aspects of yourself that you have this knowing about, you're also going to have help. So we have two of cups, which could be partnership, but for me, it also comes in as, um, if we're looking at work career specifically, more people that are like-minded, equal exchange of energy. You guys are all passionate about this, all passionate about the spiritual realm of things too. But I agree with Steph. I think there's like a little surprise waiting at the end of the, at the end of the shift, right? So keep collecting all your knowledge and your information and you already have that knowledge and information information but but yeah and I, I i feel like you already are connected with your higher self steph said that already but i just want to affirm that too that's what i got too so <laughs> and so i just want to say too for donna like you know i we we're saying you have a um surprise coming and you wanted to know if you should be focusing your energies on this the growing food medicine tarot astrology numerology crystals and so much more and so my thing is what i'm going to tell you donna is like trust your gut so if you like wake up tomorrow and you're like i really have a hankering to read about astrology, mm -hmm. then that's what you do. 
you read about astrology, the next day you might wake up and be like, I think I'm going to read about tarot. Then that's what you do that day. Because obviously there's something very magical happening for you and all these aspects, all these topics are aspects of whatever that is that you're going to be doing. And so trust what you're, you're feeling drawn to, right? Yeah. Pulled a card for her out of my Palladian deck. I don't know. I, I felt like I had to. And I got this one. You see? Oh, yeah. So Energy all of, work. Yeah. All of these are all aspects of what you're going to be doing. So just trust what your intuition is telling you to look at that day. You, you know, you know, to thine own self will be true. You know, exactly. Your, your, your gut is on it. So yeah. you got this. Donna. That too. She's on it. And, and Bryce makes a good point too, with Steph pulling that Empress card. That's, that's the new way of doing things anyways, is flowing with what comes forward at that time versus feeling forced to do something in a cyclical nature. No, you, you move forward with whatever you're drawn to. And I, I think that's a brilliant lesson for everyone too, right? Yeah. For uh, doing something that you're for, you feel forced to do over and over again is just going to create burnout. Yeah. Ooh, true. We want to walk away from that. That's right. So I, Donna, you, you, you got this girl. You, you know what you're doing. You absolutely know what you're doing. All right. So the next is actually another Donna, a Donna Reese. She got, said, love you guys and everything you do. Thank you. My husband wants to retire when all this is said and done, but I feel like there is more for me to do. It's so confusing sometimes. I'm pretty sure I've closed myself off from a lot of things. What have I done in my past lives? What else will I do in the future? Thanks so much. And I want to say Don, for Donna Reese, like I get what you're saying, but I think what's the big going to be the biggest shift for society in general, for the collective in general, is this idea of like what work actually is. You know, when, when we in the matrix that we're in, or we have been in, we have this idea of laboring, 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 and then all of a sudden we get to retire and we're done. But that's not what we were made to do. We all have a dharma. We all have a purpose. And when you're working within your dharma, it doesn't feel like work. It feels like something different. There's passion there. So um, so as far as like retiring, I don't really see that as being like a thing in the future because I don't think we're going to, first of all, we're not going to need to retire because we're going to have abundance. So there's not going to be a financial stress of having a 401k, all that kind of stuff. Um but I think your whole purpose in life, and that might shift. You might not have just one job you're doing in the next timeline. You might, that might shift as well. So I don't know, ladies, what do you think? Yeah. I wanted to say that too. That came forward in a session, like literally two days ago, like, Oh, we got a lot of work to do. And I was like, but we're tired. I literally said that. I was like, you know, a lot of us are really tired. We don't have the energy to do this work. And he shifted it. And he was like, no, no, no. Like you don't understand. Like we have so much to do, but it's going to be so much fun. It's going to be our heart centers. It's going to bring us joy. It's, it's different. Like it's because di work has such a notion around it. Now it's, it's not really work. It's, it's joy. It's joy. That's coming. Does that make work sense? we have now is more like enslavement Yeah, yeah and we're not going to be a slave planet anymore. So, <laughs> so she wants to know what if there's more for her to do that. She's kind of confused. And what has she done in past lives? Cause that might give her um, some, some clue into what she's going to be doing in the future. Yeah, for sure. Are you ready, Steph, or do you want me to go? You can go first. The first thing I was seeing in the here now moment was that she literally incarnated on this planet. So we have the sun energy and when it's coming in as like past life or anchoring of energy, for me, it's like the natural resonant frequency you have um, bringing balance back to the earth. And this could be grid work. So by you being, I don't know where you're located, um, but by you being where you are, you're affecting not only the grid around you, but the people around you. Like you're literally like, this is what you are to people. And even if it doesn't feel like that sometimes, but you're definitely anchoring and balancing out the collective. And I actually, I feel like this is something you do. I feel like you're a very high frequency being like from a very high dimension, <laughs> like very high dimension and what you do. And uh, so this is all actually about your craft. So your craft being, well, you're very independent and sovereign too. Whoa. Look at those two energies next to each other with the peacock too. The peacock, when it comes in, when I'm reading it, it's normally like, let it shine, let yourself be seen. So it's you being your authentic self. But in the past lives too, you're definitely a very creative being. Um, whenever we have this paintbrush coming out too, it's asking yourself, um, like, what is that to you? What is your joy? And you've been doing that for a while. So in past lives, I feel like you go onto planets and you anchor energy. Don't worry about doing it anything. Like you're doing enough by being you. I know you're at that point where you're worried about like, am I, am I doing enough? Am I, what do I need to be doing? You're already doing it and it'll come forward at the end too. And I'm sure Steph got more to it. Cause I can see her head right now. She's got some stuff too. So I'll let you add. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, she's definitely very um, high frequency. Oh, yeah. um, I almost, I got a vision of like um, herbs or some sort of alchemy or whatever. Um, somebody who's very, very good at alchemizing things, um, knows white magic. Um, I almost feel like in a past life, she probably had to deal with the cabal, maybe uh, dealing with that magic in a in not such a great way. Um, so that's like past life. I feel like right now, um, this kind of goes hand in hand of what you were saying, Taylor, about how where she's located. She's definitely um, doing grid work or whatnot. I feel like this is indicating that this is like she's working on something she doesn't even realize she's doing right now. Um, and again, it's like she's worrying. There's a lot of worry going on, but there's, it's not really necessary because she doesn't understand how powerful she really truly is. Definitely a very, very powerful spiritual person. Yeah. So I feel like in the future, it's going to be a lot of taking that, um, taking the things that she used in past lives, everything will come online and then she'll be doing a lot of spiritual work with that kind of thing. So she, it's like tapping into what brings her joy. I yeah. Feel. That's, that's exactly what I got too, but it's weird. I just saw her on a council too. So maybe she does bring justice in some way too, but it's a different form of justice than what we've been seeing um, on this earth plane, which has also been somewhat distorted, bringing in anchoring and real, real justice and real balance too. It's almost like a council. It's almost like maybe she, Maybe she's a council member of some sort. I don't know. That's cool. But maybe you're not supposed to know exactly what that means yet. I know that's like not fair. But for a lot of people right now, I feel like every time I read about, you know, what people are going to do in the future, it's like, it's like a two of swords. I'm being blocked. It's a lot of that hurt me. Yeah. It's, it's just because we're at that shifty moment. Yeah. It was more clear before and now it's like, no, putting the blinders up right now. Surprise. Yeah, same. Like it's in that. It's like that in my sessions too. It used to be like I used to get really clear future visions, but now it's like, no, you can't peek. No peek. But please, it's good though. We know it's gonna be good. Yeah. Oh, y'all look here. I'm gonna have to. He's. Hey, Rami. So I'm gonna read the next question. Um, okay. Out, and then I'm gonna actually go let him out because, guys, he's not happy. I keep having to meet myself because he is not happy in the in the workroom right now. He wants to go look out the front. He, we call, we call Ravi the sheriff of the neighborhood because he literally will sit in the front room at the window and just guard everyone that comes by. So um, let me read you guys the next question. Then I'm going to mute myself and let the girls take over. And then I'll be back in two seconds. So this is from a Gia Marie question. Can you find out why I've been sick for seven years and stuck in what feels like limbo for 15 years? I never resonate with resonate with people and i say every day i'm not from this earth i'm a very protective soul girl saying oh, yeah. not from this earth. i actually had a memory from our last video of seeing myself drop into this existence and i did not want to come here i was not happy about the situation so all right so that's for gia marie do you guys need me to pull the question up while i'll step out for a second or okay cool yeah. i'm gonna mute myself i'll be right back you're fine the first thing i was gonna say is this came forward in a session um i had a woman who who was also dealing with illnesses and stuff like that. And they were explaining to me, and, and I know this sounds silly. They were explaining to me that it was more necessary for her to either be in dream space or like you call it limbo. And sometimes she would remember, sometimes she wouldn't, but if she was to remember, it would give her a lot of fatigue, but she was meant to be in that energy because she could touch more people. So she could heal more people. She could do more of her missions when she was in this stagnant hanged man position. I do want to affirm, I do think that stuck energy is about to come out. And I do also want to affirm that I feel like the healing is going to come in too. And I know Steph's cards will probably give us more to that too. But I definitely feel like this is something I've been seeing recently, especially the really high frequency beings that are galactic. Um, you guys have so many missions and just you being here on this earth, but it's almost like you could do more in that state. And I know that doesn't make sense because it's like on the 3d level, you're like, what the heck? I can't do anything. I don't feel like I can, I don't want to be around people. But then on the higher aspect, the higher dimensional self of you, you're busy as hell. Like, I hope that that's what I've been seeing at least. And I'll let, I'll let stuff go forward too. Oh, she's definitely a high dimensional being with that ten of pentacles right there. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> however, I'm getting a couple of different things here that kind of go hand in hand with what us ladies have been going through a little bit. Um, so it's like 
there is a little bit of cloaking going on. I feel like, like this is like a guy in guarding the gate kind of a thing. So it's like, there's something hidden about her that um, could make her an easy target for the dark entities. But I also feel like there's been a little bit of black magic too. I don't know. What do you think, Taylor? Are you getting that from this? I don't want to put out this information. Like, a, like an, an, like an ancestral, like something being is dropped. being taken. So this is like a theft card. You get the moon. So like magician. So I don't know. It, these are not aspected very, very well. Mm -hmm. I mean, the good news is I'm not getting that it's going to stick. Um, she'll take her power back. This is a sovereign card. And it's actually going to come really quick. And we do have the sun. So I don't want to scare oh. her. But it's like, yes, I do feel like maybe somebody was even um, feeding off of her energy. That's maybe kind that's of what why I'm she's feeling. uncomfortable outside too, is, is she could feel people using her as a light source, like kind of like yes. what been seeing, like she's probably really uncomfortable because people do feed off of her. And like you said, there's probably some tricky stuff going on because of her frequency. So definitely some deceit energy of using her mad, using her, I don't want to say magic, yeah. but her energy. Right. Yeah. I see what you're saying. We're, for sure. Well, I think what we're finding out too, guys is like, this is more common than we think. <sighs> But it, it can't go forward. Something oh, like that can't go forward. It's, it's, so she definitely is of the light. And that's what they want. They want, like you say, Taylor, the yummy magic. Yeah. So. She's got a lot of it. But it's oh, not going to hold. Hugs. It'll be okay. It's all going to get gonna better. Be I promise. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> Especially that Knight of Wands coming in. I was like, yeah, that's a, sh that's a shifty shift. And with that too, of course, like when we read it, like when we're collective reading, we call it military, but also with that fire too, think about like initiation by fire, the Phoenix energy, like, Ooh, the rebirth is here, honey. Yeah. So excited. <laughs> I think, and I think I, I'm glad that she asked that question because I think a lot of people have experienced stuff, stuff like this. This yes. is common. So with that being said, it sucks, but you're not alone. And we're all, where we go one, we go all, you know, we're all in this together. And um, I can't wait to get to that, that place where we're just living in our magic and no one feeding off of us anymore. So, all right, next question. This is from Trina Malt Maltby. I hope I'm saying your last name right, Trina. Hi, all. Thank you for your wonderful shows that you three are doing. I love your vibration together. Thank you, Trina. I love our, our vibration together too. I am deaf and a qualified spiritual healer and self-learning tarot. Every time I ask for help with getting better quality home for me and my mom who has dementia, we are not getting the help. Question, will we move into a more modern bungalow without any problems? We are at the moment unable to afford to buy and will I be financially stable this year or next? I also feel that something is blocking me. Thank you and blessings. That's awesome Tina, that you are hearing impaired and you're obviously doing some stuff to help uh i'm sure there's a lot of um people in the hearing impaired community that need the same sort of assistance and you're able to provide that that's amazing you can feel it i can feel her right now so so because of the lack of hearing which obviously we would one would probably look at it as like oh that sucks right but she's had this really interesting thing where she's been able to shift it and she can feel she can feel so strongly that it actually makes her i don't want to say a better healer but like girl <laughs> pretty dang good healer you know what i'm saying <laughs> so i'm gonna say something quickly before i forget so i yeah, know Steph yeah. and i've talked about this and um, i've talked about this with Catherine edwards before too i hope she doesn't mind me mentioning this i have hearing issues as well um, it's like the least of my health problems, but I've always had very, I have very small, um, ear canals and, um, I've had a lot of issues with my hearing. I, that's why I talk kind of loud. Um, I have a really hard time, but Catherine said something interesting to me to one, one time too, cause I know she struggles as well with that. When you, when one of your senses is weak, it allows your other senses to grow stronger. Yeah. What a gift. If you, like, if you shift the perspective, what, what a gift, she really does have a gift. So if you're doing healing work right now, put yourself out there. Um, you have a gift. Like, I mean, we all have gifts, but gift hands down. Yeah. Did you already pull stuff? You can go ahead if you want. I'm processing it. If you okay. want to go first. That's fine. Totally fine. Uh, keep, keep. So she's really good about this. She knows what she wants clearly. Cause look at that. She even said a modern bungalow. I love that. I love that she could see it in her head and she's visualizing and picturing it because I got, um, nine of a nine of cups. So nine of cups is all about 
basically like uh, your desires and manifesting those and keep imagining, keep seeing them. And then don't worry, you guys will have a reason to celebrate soon. Also union energy, soul family coming together. But my favorite thing about this is you were worried about abundance. This is the abundance card in the tarot. So the sun coming in offers not only abundance, but shining light on all the things and all your desires. So for me, this is really beautiful. So I'm going to go ahead and give you a yes to all your questions. Um, and I know it's been difficult. Um, and I know it's difficult because of mom too. And I also like, I can feel it right now. I feel that you guys, I don't, I don't think you guys are feeling desperation or victim mentality because you don't, that's not the energy I see you guys in, but I can feel the pressure. Like there's a lot of like, you know, like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? Well, keep imagining quantumly. That's, that's how you do it. Even though it doesn't match. I know that's hard, but she's good about that already. I feel, but yeah. And speaking of the sun, oh, that's what I'm talking about. Cards, so like healer, abundance. Um, so yes to the, uh, the whole uh, being able to afford things going in the future. And it's like that manifestation with that magician card. She's definitely a magical person who definitely can heal. And like exactly what you said. Um, I actually, this is, this is interesting. I, this is definitely her soul contract. She's a star seed. So it's like she had to surrender to the higher dimensional um, place where she comes from. This has been very dissatisfying for her, but she came here on a life mission. She's definitely starseed with that. Um, so I do have to agree with yes on everything with that. Yeah, yeah that was awesome. Yeah, it'll, it'll be okay. And I apologize Thanks. if you guys see me getting up and down in this episode. Robbie got into some bills. I could hear him ripping it up in there. So I don't know. You don't ever have to pay these to yeah, mom. That's um, how Robbie feels about the Matrix. So. Are my dogs rubbing off on Robbie now? Oh, you know, no. normally it's my dogs causing the problems full, if I'm in the house. Full transparency. I think he has to go to the bathroom, but oh. that's not going to happen until we're done. And it's also raining outside. So I'm hoping that the rain will lift but i think that's why he's being a little bit uh naughty that's right fun. now but he just ripped up a bit i could hear you know it's kind of like when my sister's when I'm at my sister's house and like all of a sudden it's quiet she's like wait a minute what are the kids doing no yeah i, I kind of heard it be a little quiet and i just got the door open all of a sudden i heard it like rip and i was like oh, crap he got a bill and so i apologize like guys matrix. if you see me getting up and down um that's why, because he, I, th I think he's got to go to the bathroom, but he can wait. He can hold it. He's good. The good thing about street dogs, when you rescue a street dog, is like they, they're the easiest dogs to potty train because in the wild, they won't go to the bathroom near their den. So oh. he, he's, he will not go to the bathroom in the house. He can hold it. But um, the annoying thing is I usually have to walk him all the way down to the park to go because he won't go near, even though I'm picking it up. And he's a big right. dog, so it's like a man poop. But I'm picking oh, it up. Oh, Lord. So, you know, so. so Carol takes like, human poops, too. Carol takes human poops. Like, you can tell when she's taken. Like, she's, she's, I have a cat that, like, takes human poops. So imagine that. <laughs> Gosh darn it, Carol, stop taking human poops. I love where this conversation just I went, know. guys. My, I've always had big dogs. My mom has a small dog, and so it's, like, little pe pebblets. But Ravi, it's just, like, it's, like, a man shit. It's, like. <laughs> like, <laughs> is like and he has to find the perfect spot and i'm like dude i'm just gonna pick it up like it's okay just go yeah but, but if y'all see me getting up and down that's why he's being a little a little rant true we're, we're totally like this is, there's no pretense in any of our videos is there ladies like this is us oh, so make um, it till you make it <laughs> but exactly. it's like not even faking it's just a shit show <laughs> literally literally, literally. literally. <laughs> right all right, here we go. Next is from Michelle Marie. Hello, beautiful goddess warriors. I'm grateful for all the knowledge you put out into helping us in this time. My question is regarding a health issue that came abruptly in my life over two years ago. I've helped heal aspects of it, mostly through energy work and other natural means. However, many times have had close calls with not knowing if I would make it through. I would appreciate any insight you got, gals may have uh, in helping me fulfill fully heal this uh, gratitude and love, Michelle. Soul contract, right, Steph? A lot of times it is. I, other times I feel like it might be something to do with um, not being able to uh, calibrate the low frequencies 
of earth. Yeah, like she needs but, to shift because she it might not heal till it's shifted out of it, kind yeah. of. Okay. But let me see what I get here. No, that's okay. I was just curious if it was soul contract or if it's just the like like Steph said, this density is rough hard and it hurts your body. And and as you've noticed, it was two years ago. Well, we've been shifting this energy perpetually. And if you notice big shifts started happening back in, you know, 2012 too, back in two, 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 oh, oh, one, that's just what I'm saying in my head. I'm sorry. Um, I guess 2001 makes sense, right? 2012. And then before all this stuff happened in the here now, which was the perpetual energy coming in, like, think about when that happened too. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was quick for me. Um, yeah, it's still contract. Yep. Because I get the Ten of Cups and I get the Two of Cups. So, like, this was definitely a deal. I feel like, though, she is definitely having struggles uh, acclimating to Earth. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, so it's like a combination of both, but it's definitely still contract. Um, yeah. I feel like, oh. Something's coming in fast. I feel like that might be healing. Yep. The Ace of Swords. Yeah. I feel like something's coming in fast with healing. So I wouldn't worry much um, about yeah. that medical issue. Definitely is going to get healed and it's going to happen really, really quick. And those I, are like too, I literally parts. just filmed a video with Catherine Edwards and her friend on the Passions of and we kind of touched on this. We have kind of a messed up view on sickness in, in our world now. And I know from my studies in India, like sometimes sickness isn't what you think it is, you know, and, and, and sometimes when our body kind of goes through these health uh, fluctuations, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's like an evolution is happening. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, that's, that's a cool card. Again, I felt the need I had to pull from that deck. See, my gifts are coming online now. I'm like, oh. Yay. I'm like listening to what I need to do. And, yeah. um, like technology med bed uses like technology mm -hmm. and other healing devices that we're going to find out. It's not just, it's not just med beds. There's other technologies that are coming about too. Yeah. We're just not yeah. aware of what they are. And you things are happening. I don't, I mean, I hope you girls don't mind. Like we were saying before we signed on, we were doing our own, we kind of do our, our own little divination before we sign on to record. And the three of us, the last couple of nights, haven't really been remembering a lot of our dreams, which before I was. And we asked why, and we're getting like, might sound wild, but I think it's happened to a lot of people. We're getting encoded in, at night now. And I think it's preparing us for things like med beds for, you know, it's kind of giving you that. Um, it's like sometimes before you have a surgery, you have to prep for the surgery, right? Like in our, how we understand it now, it's kind of like what's happening. So I don't, I don't want people to be too freaked out if they're feeling a little bit wobbly, if their health's been a little bit weird these last two years. There's so much going on that we, we're we just, we just have to surrender to it, you know, because it's all for the bet, the betterment of you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was just, fine. She's, she's going to, she's fine. She's going to be great. We have the Empress energy, but I do feel like whatever happened two years ago with the two of swords stopped you dead in your tracks. So maybe also there was a shift that needed to take place in your external life too. But I do agree with Steph. It looks like the combination of soul contract energy, like you agreed to do this plus the frequency being intense on you. And then like Bryce said, like this aspect of healing with the med beds, like we also can pull in like technology, like at night, Literally, we're getting healed at night, but you can also have access to that pure photonic source light and bring it in any time. And I think she's already, she's continuing. So basically what I'm going to say, because I think you're already pulling it. I can see you doing it. Like you're actually really good at harnessing it. So keep doing that. Keep doing that. But just know that it's going to perpetuate the energy that's going to come forward for you anyways. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, all right. So we're going to go to Monica Harkins. Hello, Bryce, Taylor, and Steph. I love and appreciate all the work you are doing. Thank you, Monica. My question is that I'm a licensed esthetician and only use Ayurvedic skin care products in my spa. I'm also certified to do holistic healing coaching. In the last year or so, I've had a clear audience develop development and my healing abilities have gotten stronger. I don't understand most of it and listen to my guides for help. They are now telling me the next thing to incorporate is yoga. 
Am I supposed to do something to incorporate all of the above? Okay. Problem is I don't like yoga. I've tried classes and can barely get through down dog. Is this the right path? I want to do my part to help huma humanity using my gifts. Is yoga really my next step? Well, I can speak a little bit on that, Monica. So as we said in the beginning, and I, I'm just now reading these questions, so I had no idea that was coming up. Most of the yoga you see, if you were in the Western world, most of the yoga you see is not yoga. 99% of the yoga you see is not yoga. So that might be why you're not resonating with the practice because your soul knows it's not the actual practice. Um, and I would suggest now, obviously my technology has been a little screwed with. So even if you send me an email, I might not get it right now because of what's going on, but I would definitely suggest looking into lineage based practices. And, um, as far as the physical, uh, asana the posture practice of yoga it's not supposed to be easy you're supposed to be challenged you're supposed to feel sensations it's supposed to suck like 99 percent of the time um i sweat like a beast in my practice i'm i've been sore now for 15 years like literally been sore for 15 years so it's not if you feel like it's challenging then that's good that means the alchemy is actually working okay yeah. if you feel that and you have this weird idea that it's not supposed to be challenging. That's because that's nowhere in the yoga sutras does it say it's supposed to be, you're supposed to be comfortable. You're supposed to be relaxing. In fact, it says the exact opposite that you're supposed to almost have a controlled demolition of your own self. So you're basically breaking your ego through your body. So I would suggest looking at lineage based practices, which would be Ashtanga, Iyengar or Sevananda yoga. And once you find which of the three you want to practice, because you have to pick one, otherwise it just becomes a clusterfuck, um, then find a teacher in that lineage that actually has appropriate credentials. So for the lineages, if they did any uh, teacher trainings, just from my perspective, don't go to them. Um, you want to go to someone who's actually studied in India with a proper guru, a proper lineage holder, a parm guru. All right. And that's going to give you the, if they're using English words to describe the postures, don't go to them. All right. Part of, you know, from Ayurveda. Okay. What are the three elements of Ayurveda healing? Food, breath, vibration. So when somebody is calling the postures in their English translation, they're doing you a disservice. They need to be calling it in the actual name, the Sanskrit name, Utkatasa, Bhujapidasana, Supta Kramasana. You know, all the different, they have to have their actual name because that vibration is what's helping that Ill element of healing. Um, you also know the breathing part of yoga is a breathing practice. So I would definitely, that's just my two cents because that's, that's what I'm a professional at, I guess. Um, just, just do your, just, just do your research um, on true yoga. Yeah. You want me to go, Taylor? Yeah, go ahead. Start? I have my cards out, okay. but I, I'm patient. Go ahead. All right, so I get the world in the Knight of Pentacles card. I feel like this up. I feel like some kind of opportunity will come to her, um, probably regarding true yoga, um, like Bryce just said. Um, so she will have an opportunity. She's really going to have to tough it out though for a little bit. It is going to be very, very difficult with that Queen of Swords. It's like get brave about it, get stubborn about it, like just push through it. It's like. Um, uh, the queen of swords is very strong, um, strong willed is what I'm picking up. And she's going to go through probably what you went through, Bryce, with doing yoga. You do have those tower moments. You have those dark night of the soul moments where you're pushing through, pushing through, pushing through. But it's going to probably increase her intuition. So there's a reason for it. I think there's a reason why her guides are telling her to do this. And I do get an ace, which is an automatic yes. She needs to start looking into it but I feel like the opportunity will come at the right moment. So Monica, I would suggest you go ahead and get a copy of the yoga sutras of Patanjali. This is the copy that I'm reading through on the channel right now. It's the commentary by Sri Swami Satyananda. There's multiple commentaries and what uh, Stephanie is referring to the intuition rising is what we call a Siddhi. And that comes in the, the, the back two padas, pada three and pada four. If you are serious about it, I would suggest getting a teacher to walk you through because you need to go through the first two padas before the back three and four, but a Siddhi is like, um, 
it's like a yoga power. It's, I hate to call it that way. And, and you don't need to be doing yoga for the powers. Like if you do yoga for the powers, that's like, have, that's like black magic. It's just something that comes with the practice because you're grounding more into yourself. Um, that's the idea of levitation, like all that kind of stuff of understanding your own consciousness. So when she hit on intuition, that is a siddhi that happens the more you get into your practice, but you can only really develop that intuition stronger if you allow yourself to actually have those tower moments and have the dark night of the soul and that actual ego death that, ha that comes. That's not fun. It's not fun. It's, it's very, lots of tears, lots of sweat, lots of blood, lots of tears. So, um, so I would suggest go ahead and, and getting yourself a copy of the yoga sutras. I have many commentaries, but this is one of the most popular ones is Sri Swami Sachitananda's commentary. So I would suggest doing that too, because that will give you some information as well. I did just want to say um, with the wheels, fortune, wheel of fortune and the traditional tarot, I did want to say thank you for alchemizing the aesthetics community. I was a medical esthetician. So it's so cool that we, uh, you also have, you feel so you feel so like home to me because you have so much water coming in. So this is normally like a knight of cups. It's crazy because when Steph got her knight of pentacles, she said offer. That's the first thing I heard too like an offer coming <clears throat> i'm sorry my throat was trying to come online with my light like i don't know why i want to talk during light language i'm not gonna no, do, it girl, right do it if you need to no it's okay right now i have to talk um <laughs> so ace of water too that's that rebirth energy that new energy coming in but i was i just wanted to say thank you for alchemizing the aesthetics system and i also know every time you've touched a person with your hands and with your healings you've really really affected them too but yeah there's this huge new healing energy these huge new gifts coming in i think with the practice of like proper yoga like i was telling bryce about these yoga poses that they had me doing at my yoga studio and i lived in missouri like there was only one yoga studio you went to and it was like hot yoga and it was real distorted. And I was telling Bryce about all these things. She's like, well, she looks horrified. She's like, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> so yeah, so maybe finding proper yoga and then decide how you want to move forward after that. But I think you'll actually be drawn to that part of it too. But there's a lot of water. So you talking about the intuition um, coming online too with the gifts. Oh yeah. Oh, oh my God. So thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. Holy hell. <laughs> well, the Palladium card for her too. Yay. Set your vibration. It's oh, like, color. I think the yoga is going to set her vibration, which is where that her. intuition, yes, yeah. will come online. I it's, love um, that so much. <laughs> I do too. The one thing about yoga too, is it like grounds you into your body. And, and there's a lot about your body that, that we are disconnected from. Mm -hmm. And the more you, you know, in the sutras, they talk about the gross body and the subtle body. The gross body is like your physical, big muscles, big body. And a lot of people can only connect to their gross body. They can't even feel the subtle body. But when you, the more you get into yoga, the more those little muscles start to kind of wake back up again and move and you get into the bunda locks and how the bundas control the lower part of the pelvis and all this information starts to come out of you that you've had in you all this time. And sometimes a practice like yoga is the only thing that's really going to pull that out. And you're going to start to notice those subtle body responses, which is going to, it's like you, it's like Cindy says, you have to descend before you can ascend. You have to like go into the body before you can actually feel that vibration of being human. Yeah. That's amazing. All right. So, so this isn't, this is just a comment. So I'm going to read it uh, from awakening and little rays of sunshine. Hello, beautiful souls. No question. I just wanted to say thank you to you ladies for all you do. Watching you has given me the courage to start my own YouTube journey. I'm blessed. I've found you continue prayers for your success with a light love and a little ray of sunshine. Dawn, Dawn, I will share Dawn. your channel on my community tab. And we're done. Dawn. We'll, we'll get out there. <laughs> the girl. Same thing. Do what? I'll do the same thing. For Let's her. go. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes, if you start a channel, just shoot us a message. We'll share it for you. Like we if it want. wasn't for David Zublick, I would not have a platform. So it's all takes us helping each other out. So if you have a channel you've started, like we will help you get your channel out there. No problem whatsoever. Um, another one is from HD wwg1 wwga where, where we go on we go all love watching y'all and listening to you ladies all oh, he says y'all too thank you so much for you your intuition strength and guidance with love thank you okay oh. la uh shammy says hello ladies lisa here i have enjoyed seeing how much y'all's intuition and tarot readings have grown i debated two questions and not sure which to ask so i will leave it to you when I was between three and four years old, I still remember a terrible dream with glowing green eyes and fear of being grabbed. Knowing what I know now, was it a dream? 
Uh, Second question is what tools would be best for me uh, to learn, use, to assist in my purpose in this lifetime? Thank you. And infinite blessings to all. I think we can answer both. What do you ladies yeah. think? Yeah. I already have a feeling about what the dream was about. I know what it was too, because I just, I had similar things happen to me, but I'll let Steph talk about that. I'll just say with the tool thing, like you don't need any tools except for if you feel drawn to something and you know, it's going to affirm what you already have within you, which I think you're going to be really, really surprised. I, I think you're not going to be surprised, but there's going to be this pleasant surprise. If you're going to say something and then all of a sudden like that card falls out, or you're going to say yes in your head and the pendulum says, yes, like you can use those tools, but what those tools are designed to do in this now moment, because we're shifting away from that energy is affirm, affirming you already have those tools and gifts within you. And they're just going to keep getting bigger. I mean, it's almost like I'm seeing it like bigger and bigger and bigger. So those gifts are already coming online for you. But I think I know what happened with, um, the glowing green eyes. Um, I'll let Steph pull and then I can share my stories too. If that helps as well. <laughs> yeah. I would see red eyes all the time. Yeah. They were not dreams. There were lots of, uh, lots of eyes. <laughs> yeah. They were not dreams. No. Well, I get this upside down. Yeah. The page source. I almost feel like, yeah, something was purposely trying to scare her. It was not a dream. It was actually a real thing. Um, this, Whoever is trying to scare is facing some serious karma. That's for Ooh. sure. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like uh, she might have been blocked from the entire vision, though, or in the entire thing of remembering all of it, because it might have been that traumatic for her. Um, I Honestly, what I see is like reptilian eyes or something like that. Yep. Yeah. Um, and if you are uh, higher dimensional, they, they tend to want to feed off of the light of people of the light. So, yeah, I, I feel like um, I was reading this card wrong, but now I'm trying to let me process that for a second. That's okay. I feel like she needs to let go of that, though, and move outward from that memory. Because yeah. I feel like this memory is actually holding her down quite a bit because we do have the four of pentacles. Oh, that's fascinating. So I think it's like she needs to heal from that. And maybe even Very just dramatic. knowing that she was right, because I have this feeling yeah. she knew it wasn't a dream, right? Like she knew it wasn't a dream. So even just knowing now that that experience did happen and that it will never, ever happen to you again, um, that might help you heal from it too. And it's good that you were blocked from it. Um, some of the, I've had visions of what happened to me on some of these abductions and it's, it's probably for the best that you don't remember them. Yeah. I just want to affirm that too. Like you're not crazy. That wasn't a dream. Cause I think we've all had those experiences and there's a reason why I think shifting the perspective of, Oh my God, I was attacked to, Oh, there's a reason why I was attacked. What's that reason? That's your power. And I'm still here. Like I'm, I can't believe I sur think about all the stuff we survived plus all the stuff we survived that we don't even recall completely. So that's pretty amazing too. Yeah. About it. You're powerful. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's the good thing. And I think I do, I understand where she's coming from holding on to it because I know for a long time I held on to stuff that had happened to me in the paranormal metaphysical realm because I didn't want to talk about it because I felt crazy or weird or like no one would, would believe me. Um, but the more I could talk about it and, and the more people confirm like, oh, that's happened to me too. Oh my gosh, it's happened to me too. The more I was able to kind of own it and then just like be okay with it, you know, let like cut it off, let it go. Right. You yeah. didn't get me. I'm still here, you know, so, I love that. all right. So this is from Brenda Tanner. What is the most important thing we know, need to know collectively for the next couple of months? Hmm. Uh, go within yourself, buckle up, love yourself, forgive yourself, boundaries. There's so much to do. Laugh. So little time. Smile and wave. That's right. I know you have a time as this. Time such as this. This is your time. You came here for a reason. I'm trying to decide what deck is pulling. Why? I'm getting pulled on by a deck I don't have out. That's so weird. Okay, that's it'll be fine. Go ahead, Steph. <laughs> Sorry. No, I'm about. still shuffling on the question. So. so what we need, can you read it just like one more time in full? Just so I can, or not in full, but you know. She says, what is the most important thing we need to know collectively for the next couple of months? Walk away because we leaving y'all. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, so eight of, eight of cups is like walking away. Look, the ship is coming. Oh my God, the ship arrived. There's the ship. There she is. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> 
sorry. I'm such a dork. Everything hey. you wanted is coming. <laughs> sorry, guys. Yeah, it's guys. Tough. We it, it's it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be a hard couple of months, but it's mm -hmm. um for good reason. Um, well, I feel like there's big changes coming with the magician card. Um, a little bit more balance coming into the next couple of months. Um, there's going to be things that um, are dissatisfying, but it's like, I, I don't think that really counts for us. I, I feel like that has something to do okay. with like the, the normie col collective yeah. um, going forward. It's going to be very hard for them, but I feel like we need to be there to help them. Um, I, I wonder if this has anything to do with Galactics. Yay. Also, the Aquarian cards are so oh. really into the age of Aquarius. Yeah, we're going well. into the age of Aquarius and then Galactic family friends coming on board Sweet. and then walking away from the age of the Pisces. Old system. Yeah. So that's something beautiful. we're walking away from. Yeah, that's how I feel too. Yeah, that was my energy too, was that eight of cups. So yeah, that definitely resonates with me for sure. All right. So this is from Anne. Thank you for everything you beautiful ladies are doing. Thank you, Anne. I've been feeling stuck for quite a while now. Will I get through my struggles and what advice do you have? Yeah, I just want to affirm that you're not like in a position of like doing anything wrong. Um, there is so much stuck energy. And as Steph said, we have this weird little block up. It didn't used to be like this, even in sessions, like months ago, I could see a future screen. I know I already said this, but now they're like, no, no, no. So a lot of us are feeling hanged man blocked. The best advice I have for you that came through in a session a couple days ago from someone really, really cool too. So the higher being was really, really freaking cool. Um, one day I'll share that obviously, but it was um, take this time to rest and take care of yourself. And I know that's like, you're like, no, come on, come on, come on. But there's a reason. I saw this a question again. Um, she's feeling, she said, uh, I've been feeling stuck for quite a while now while I get through my struggles. What advice do you have? It's funny you say the resting thing though, Taylor, because on the Cassiopeian board, um, they talk about how this is our time of rest. Like the, the real work hasn't even started yet. That's, that's what we got to. That's fascinating. Oh, wow. That matches up. That's yeah. crazy. Like, like people are like, what? Cause we feel like we're exhausted and they're like, no, you're resting right now. Just wait. So, but um, fun stuff coming yes, right? fun. <laughs> yes fun fun and then of course our whole reality is going to be different so we think about like energy is going to be different too so yeah you know we'll have more it'll be okay but yeah we'll, we'll let stuff go first though because i'm still shuffling well oh yeah she's not gonna be like that for much longer we get the tower card. She's going to be working, 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 working during the, all the chaos. Mm -hmm. I mean, it couldn't be any more clear than that. She's going to be helping a lot of people soon. So what I would say, is, it, is her name Anne? Is that yes. the name? Okay. So to yes. Anne, it's like we're there. And in, in, you're not going to feel like that much longer at all. Listen, right now, just take those bubble baths. Go to bed early. Enjoy, enjoy your little little me time because pretty soon you're going to be having to give that energy back to other people. I just had a vision for her. Um, so I saw all these people underwater, and all these people were underwater, and they didn't understand what was going on. Some of them were choking. Some of them were calm. And I watched her put her hand, and it's so funny because it really resonates with what Steph pulled and what Steph was saying about helping people during all the chaos. And she's pulling these people up. So it's almost like she's, we've seen this recently too, like pulling people onto the timeline, mm -hmm. like pulling people's up. And it doesn't mean like you're going to be so empty or anything. You're going to have a lot of off-world help too, the star coming in. But it's like, oh yeah, you're, you're a healer. You're going to help those people during that chaos. And that's, that's what I got too. So literally Steph and I got the exact same cards, but different, like different cards, but mirroring, mirroring energy. So yeah, exactly, exactly. I pulled a Palladian card that might even further explain. I think also she feels a little stuck because she's not exactly stuck. She's in dream time. She's doing a lot of work in dream time. Easy. That's a cool card stuff. Yeah. Isn't that like kind of glows <sighs> right on the screen? <coughs> yeah. Yeah. If anybody, I can give you the link for this deck of price to put in your description box. If anybody's interested, this is my favorite Oracle deck I have 
so far. Well, one of them. I, I do have a couple favorites. This is one of them. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think she's doing stuff in her dream time too. She's busy. Yeah. So she's not doing nothing and she's not stuck. She's busy. A lot <laughs> of people I say are in that. So in the Ashtanga practice, it's really, the Ashtanga practice I do, the yoga practice is very, very hard. It, it breaks your body down. And a lot of times people get really caught up in that work, but resting is also part of the process. Resting is also in part of that work. So if you feel like you're in a state right now, especially if you're working at night and the day you're tired or you need to take a bath or you need to like go and like get a massage or whatever, that's part of the process too. You know, so, so think about like when you're, if you think about it from your body's perspective, like if you're exercising, you need a day of rest or something, your muscles to rebuild, well, your soul, your energy also needs that time too. So don't feel guilty about resting, especially if you're doing a crap ton of work at night or, you know, and, or, you know, that your work is about to like really pick up. So mm -hmm. don't feel like, I think that's kind of that matrixy, like 3d, like mentality that we can't we can't slow down. We have to like keep going. And if we're resting, it's bad. No, resting is part of it. It's part of it. So don't feel bad about that at all. I'm mostly talking to myself because I have a really hard time with that in my own life, allowing myself to kind of like rest. So, you know, that's a huge lesson I've had to learn too in my life. That's it's like, that's part of it. Message. That's a great message, Bryce. Seriously. All right. Robin says, thank you ladies for all the light you bring. Thank you, Robin. I would like to know why I was sick for nine years. I'm coming out of it now. I started crying again after 10 or more years of not crying. Laying in bed for years, I worked on forgiveness and letting go. Spiritually, I'm stronger than ever before. What's my next move, please? Thanks, bu bunches. And Robin, crying is not a sign of any type of weakness or anything like that. Sometimes you just got to cry. Let it go. Let it flow. Yeah. Release. So oh, she can bring in something new. Uh, the new is coming. I saw Ace of Cups in my head too. Like it's very, and that's funny because of the water too. I guess that makes sense. But like water initiation, water initiation again. Here we go, boys. Oh yeah. I got a Knight of Cups. Oh, something is going to come in and it's going to offer itself to you. And it's very emotionally fulfilling too. Um, this could be, I mean, this could be love energy, but whenever I think of cups too, it doesn't have to be that if we're talking about what the next step is, it could be soul contracts, soul relationships coming in and you're doing things you love with these people as well but it also could be like if it's very watery too it's that rebirth literally initiation by water again too yeah i'll let steph pull first but that one did fly out while i was shuffling so i'd be like something's coming <laughs> yeah something is coming and i i, I get something will be offered to her with that that Sick. ace of pentacles what i do get though is um i do get the devil card that's not to be mistaken with anything evil because this isn't always evil no. this could be you're obsessing about it or you're worrying over something a little too much um this is kind of a letting go card um in certain spreads and i'm getting it's like let it go because you will something will be offered and i do get that she is definitely someone of a higher frequency who has healing abilities of some kind um and abundance is coming her way and, and things will be balanced back out. Yeah, I got lots of water. I just I just wanted to say Ace of Cups, the one I saw in my mind's eye did come out. And then um, Three of Water is celebration energy coming together energy. And that goes back to that. It goes back to the Knight of Cups too, which is what I was talking about, about soul, family, soul unions. This feels like it's both in your reality, but it's also connecting above too. If you know what I'm saying? That coming online very strong too, especially with her spirituality coming online really significantly. Ooh, girl, you're going to have contact. Contact. Yes. That's fine. That's what our next question is about, is about off worlders. So this is from Al Durant. Hey, hello, beautiful souls. Would you ask about my relationship with the off worlders, spe specifically Palladians? I grew up feeling like I had superpowers and always tried to move levitate objects with my mind, LOL. In this lifetime, have I broken my karmic ties to previous traumas? I feel as though I was a, a B U S E D in the past lives and have had some in this lifetime as well. Thank you, ladies. Thank you for clearing that karma. You're not only clearing that karma for yourself, you did it for the collective too, especially with your high frequency. And, and yes, yes, you've cleared your karma like 120%. Like I just saw. Yes. Yeah. yeah she's, she's done a great job. Look at the, there's been a lot of forgiveness. She's done a lot of work with forgiveness. Wow. I think. Yeah. Isn't that pretty? It's a, is that a whale? It's a whale. Yeah. 
the frequency of whale to whale frequency that's mintaka which you could have another originality for your planets too very old soul very very gifted soul and that's why when you came down to this density you're like where are my superpowers <laughs> you know what else the whale is a representation of what's that the womb Oh, let me, oh my God, we get so much womb. Like, let's talk about wombs again. Like, <laughs> I know, <laughs> make well, we were great. talking about, like, this is why all three of us have had issues with our wombs, with our, our issues that we realize were for a reason. Yeah. So it's very interesting that that will, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what about the Palladians? Is she, is she got a relationship with the Palladians? Yeah, it's already happening. They're already contacting her. Oh, oh my God, Steph. Yeah, I got well. I kind of got something simpler. Yeah, so go okay. ahead, go ahead. <laughs> if, if there is a card that says you're working with somebody, <laughs> card out of that the one. whole entire deck. Also, too, I pulled another plating card, um, and I got service. So yeah. look at those dolphins. Isn't that pretty? So, um, and this is the plating deck. So you know that's perfect. Um, but yeah, she's working with them, and it's um, passionate work. There's a lot of love that goes into this. I think she'll, I think it will be like an open thing. Like she'll actually be very, very well aware of it. Probably more as in like dream space for right now or something like that. She, she looked really hard on children. Yeah. Uh, I almost saw, I didn't know if it was a lover or a child. I just, I just pulled the next one. Yeah. I saw it up there. Okay, cool. Wow. That's just weird how that works out. Mother, father healing. Um, that's working stuff out. That's working on herself. She had to anchor that energy here before and she doesn't like it. Like, not that you don't like it. You're very, very lovely. It's, it's not that you don't like it. It doesn't resonate with you. I think that's a better word. I am like, I didn't want to come back. <laughs> yeah. Heard. Yeah. It. yeah. It's heavy. It is very, heavy. I don't like it. I don't like it. I mean, I literally, we talked about this in the last video. I literally remember, I have a memory now of coming down to, and I did not want to do this. Like I did it because obviously I had to, but I did, that was my, I wasn't like, let's do this. I want to go to earth again. Give me some pop tarts and some popcorn and some Coca-Cola. No, I was like, I don't want to fucking do this. Like, God, This is going to suck. So I get that. I totally get that. Dad, I don't want to go to earth school again. <laughs> Basically, that's what it was relevant <laughs> over target Let's and go. in my memory that i know his memory i was leaving with my twin and your yeah. twin is like the most passionate entity you have in your existence your best friend your lover everything and i knew that we weren't going to remember each other and that sucked to like actually face that person i don't know if you're called a person in the galactics but you guys know what I'm and like to watch <laughs> you both go down through your portals you know that's that's um that's intense so i get that yeah. feeling like i think all of us are like <laughs> abort mission take me back <laughs> hey guys i seriously yeah. split the deck of my palladian deck and i got telepathy while mm -hmm. we're talking about twin flames and quantum heart oh that's funny because my heart center was like exploding when you were talking Bryce. Yeah. <laughs> my heart center was like <laughs> i could feel everything you were saying yeah, Bryce, and literally heart. i pulled these two things that i love this deck it's so powerful i love it i know yeah, you might have to, um, we might have to do a read exchange or something. Cause I know, right? I love that deck. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess to go, I mean, like that, that shows you the intensity of emotions that we all are starting to feel now, the memory. And that's why we couldn't remember. Because I know the intensity over the last couple of months of memory for me has made things a lot more difficult emotionally because I'm starting to have these memories and yeah. figuring and figuring things out. And you said something brilliant in our last video, Stephanie, about how you're forgetting like people's names from high school. I'm not really forgetting, but it's like it's kind of fading. Like the old life mm -hmm. is kind of fade. The old person that I thought I was is kind of it's fading. So and I'm kind of moving into like who I am and mm -hmm. am consciously. And there's a lot of um when you have other twin flames, soulmates, whatever out there that, you know, you are deeply connected to, it's not that you're not whole without them. It's just that, that heaviness of not being able to hug them or speak to them or, you know, there it's, it's an intensity. So I totally understand why she wants to verify she's having that connection with the Palladians and Palladian and Palladians himself are hysterical. 
they're funny yeah <laughs> yeah there's the very chatty beings um mm -hmm. but but i love it because it's like as soon as you make that solidified contact it's very like heart-centered telepathy but they're very chatty and they have a lot to say so if, if you guys do have palladian lineage just make sure you're calling it in for your highest good but like let those messages come in because it's 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 humorous but it's also very loving it's it's quite fascinating it's so funny they, they, they i hear the other night yeah, what? I laughed at last night. They laughed at me the other night because I'm like outside taking my dogs and I'm like, SOS, please abduct me. Now get me off the spot. <laughs> There's a and meme I, I sent to Steph. <laughs> <laughs> I felt, I could feel them laughing at me. Just a little bit longer, sweetheart. Just a little longer. Yeah, easier yeah. for you to say you're on the friggin' ship. Right. They're like big too. Like they're like Nordic y, like Viking esque. Like, uh, you know, in my higher self, in my memory, I was quite tall too. But yeah, yeah. but um, yeah, they're very like, well, you know, but I, yeah. All right. Do you guys want to do one more question before sure. we next week? Okay. So this is from sure. Stacy. Um, I want to thank you all for the information you have all provided. I've learned so much and also found myself full of more questions with every bit of new information that's discovered. For example, I am of the negative bloodline, but not, do not know if it's A, A, B, B, or O. My mom doesn't know what her blood type is, not, or not my dad. Yeah, my mom's side of the family can be traced back to King Charlemagne from Southern France. That leads me to my question, uh, what the role of negative bloodlines will play in this world. Okay. So this is where I started really kind of my red pilling yeah. besides all of the, um, spiritual stuff that happened to me. I'm, we're all races negative, aren't we? I'm O. So, you're I'm O negative too as well. And you're AB negative. I'm AB negative. So O negative is Atlantean. That's the Atlantean bloodline. AB negative is the Christ consciousness, Christ bloodline. Well, Mary Magdalene, what if Yashua? But yeah, the Yashua. Yashua. Bloodline. So just when we say a negative bloodline, we don't mean negative as in bad. It's just you don't have the rhesus factor in your blood. You're without the rhesus factor. Um, I as far as like who you are as a person, that's up to you. Yeah. That's, it doesn't matter what your blood type is. When I meet people in the world, I'm, I'm the first, I don't ask them about their blood type. I just like them or I don't like them. You know, I've, I've never really asked anybody like what's, your blood, what's type? your blood type it's kind of yeah. like are you a scorpio like you know yeah. <laughs> i actually care more about that than i do yeah, that's what i was about to say <laughs> yeah hey guys i'm getting something very unique i actually predicted this like not predicted i don't want to say predict but i kind of had this thought even before i started my youtube channel and the cards kind of spelled it out it's like rh positive is not going to exist anymore like, yeah, I felt that way too. So let's let's clarify oh. that. That doesn't mean if you're RH positive, you're going somewhere. No, it's not that. It's it's no one's fault if they have the positive racist factor. I think it was the something about the monkey DNA the that was yeah. It was a manipulation. And not that there's anything wrong with anyone who's RH positive. I know plenty of wonderful RH positives. There's nothing who you are as a person is, is solely up to you, regardless yeah. of what your blood type is. But it's like there's going to be a surrender. Like there's something that blocks, there's something blocking and something that will be surrendering to, um, but it's going to be like balancing out itself. We have the world card. I have the queen of cups. I always think of the queen of cups as like a balancing type of card, but I have a high priestess. So it's like, we don't know. Interesting. Everything. So Reese's say, well, maybe this has some, go ahead. Sorry, uh, Reese's negative people tend to be more spiritually um, aligned with, uh, they, they get more, they have higher intuition, they, they, our There's eyes are a little bit different, so we can literally see things that others can't see. Um, and I believe that the, the Reese's factor was injected into humans in order to try to take that away from us. It doesn't mean if you're Reese's positive, you aren't having spiritual experience. It doesn't mean that at all. But I think that was their attempt. Now we know that the 1%, the elite, that they love Reese's negative. Um, all of our presidents have been Reese's negative, the royal family, like they love that. It's only 15% of the population that, that have. But I think that with, over time, like med beds uh, will start to extract that from your blood again, if that makes sense. But does, it's, it's not going to make a hole again. It's, I think they injected the rhesus factor so that um, people would comply easier. Yeah. And again, if you're awake, RH positive, we're not talking um, down on anybody like that. It's just, it's something that you were, you were handed and born with it. 
you have no control over it. So it's okay. But it's like, it's going to be made whole again. Like this is going to, the, the positive is going to disappear because in the beginning, I think everyone was RH negative. Mm-hmm. Does it make sense? Yeah. yeah. Um, there's just a couple things that I've done studies intuitively with this stuff. So it also tells you a little bit about if you're RH positive and you came in, doesn't mean you were intuitive or anything like that. It's also, you may have incarnated into that bloodline and happened to have the RH factor because RH positive factor, um, because, because of your family unit. So just remember that too, that's not your fault, but also that negative also tells us the lineage. Think about all the galactic lineage and you were speaking about the presidents and stuff all being RH negative. Well, it's fascinating because I went through this process whenever I figured out my blood type, I freaked out. I was like, why am I like them? Why am I like them? No, no, no. It's not about that. It's about the galactic origins or the origins. Like it's an origin energy and all it does is tell us our lineage. Like I could probably look at the blood and the DNA and zoom in on it and tell you lineage but there's nothing wrong with the positive it's just going to get fixed because it was meant as a block that's all it right. is there's nothing wrong yes. with y'all it's gonna this be fixed get the for two some of people. Swords. yeah it's where i get the two of swords there's a block like yeah. you're trying to block something by injecting the rhesus factor into the blood i don't think human beings originally had the rhesus factor Either. that's a total manipulation and it also t- it also gave like you know when i was starting to research into the rhesus negative myself first of all it explained a lot of of, of things about me that had happened to me in my life. Um, but I also remember hearing scientists talk about the rhesus negative being a different species. Mm-hmm. They were a different species. Well, no, we're all human beings. And I think, I think it also plays into this, like uh, what I believe is the fairy tale of evolution. They don't want you to know that you are a galactic cosmic spiritual powerhouse. They want you to think that you're an accident and just over some freak, thing you evolve not that, i mean monkeys are great i think they're created by god too but that you came from this other thing you know and that's not true and so if they have if they had evidence to show you then the then the majority of humans would believe it and so and i do and it was just created to block but that doesn't mean it blocked everyone some of you guys are racist positive and you have multiple spiritual experiences so and I want to say too, one thing too, if you are Reese's negative, it doesn't, it doesn't make you special. I don't think we consider ourselves to be special. Do we like, like any specialer than any other human being, we're right? All, we're all equal. Yeah. We're all equal. So, and let's give an example, right? So we know that, that Yahshua was a B negative. Well, guess who else was a B negative? Barack Obama. Yeah. That's a good point. Think about it. So it's what you do with it. Ooh, choose you it. Get- yeah whoa yeah you have to make the choice it goes full circle i got this a couple weeks ago it's like you make the choice yes absolutely and i i did pull a palladian card for this question as well and this is fascinating rooted light so what is the root of our light so if we go back to the root of all things that's where we're going to yeah isn't that fascinating i I seriously can't get over this deck. It's like it's pulling the right card out of it. <laughs> it's going to be beautiful, guys. Yeah. So, again, I just want to clarify, if you are RH positive, there's nothing wrong with you. You mm-hmm. are a beautiful human being. And you did, I believe you did make that choice to come into an RH positive body. And maybe part of that was correcting, eventually allowing your DNA to be going. cleansed so that the next generations won't have to deal with with that, and you, you know, and it also doesn't mean you're not spiritual. Like, of course, there's tons of RH positive people who are super spiritual. It was just their, it was their attempt at trying yeah. to pull humanity down. It's a great way. To and we it. also need to remember too what the devil made for bad, God makes for good. So there is no accidents with this. And sure. I always, I ever since I channeled this um, a couple of weeks ago, I keep going back to it how God is a thousand steps ahead of the devil but it looks like he is a few steps behind him. So just if you are RH negative, there's a reason for it. Like Bryce said. Yeah. 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 Every, I I just want to really, every single person in this world right now is here for a reason is, Mm -hmm. is important. Nobody this, I I really want to, I hope moving forward, people understand this whole idea of, of some people being better than others or this idea of, of elite or celebrity, that's not gonna that's not gonna flow in the new world. Why do you think they say where we go one, we go all? This is about all of us. And so I really, I really want people watching this to understand you are special. 
You are special. You are powerful. You are loved by source, by the Palladians, by all the other off rollers, maybe not the Draco and Anunnaki, but, um, but uh, you are very, very special. And you, this, it, it, I joke about not wanting to come here, but this was like a lottery system, like in the sense that everybody that's here was put here specifically for a purpose. And so I really, I really want people to understand that if you're feeling stuck, if you're worried about your blood type, if you're worried about your lineage, if you're worried about your, your family's karma, it's okay. You're here for a reason. You are loved and you are special. I love that. Yeah. It was like, you yeah. choose, you break through the barriers. You get to choose to break through the barriers. You are limitless, right? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right, ladies, any party words before we sign out today? Do you want to get like a Palladian card to leave us off? Is that okay, Steph? I pulled three already. Oh my God, stop. Okay, let's go. Stop reading my mind tale. No, I like it in there. It's <laughs> oh warm. my God, this telepathy is so invasive. <laughs> Listen, if you guys walked into my brain, you'd walk right out. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Stephanie channeled my higher self the other night or channeled somebody connected to my higher self the other night who apparently was channeling my higher self and asked that higher self if my higher self know. was telling that higher self. <laughs> I had to walk out. I had to walk out. It was I was like, I no. said what? <laughs> no. Stephanie like, you walked in on them. You're like, <laughs> I was like, my higher self is fun. You are fun. a lot more fun than I am. Understatement. Understatement. <laughs> <laughs> We'll leave it at that. <laughs> well, um, I got the dream, the, the dream time card again. So I would say probably to the audience, pay attention to your dreams. Get a get a journal if you're having dreams and you remember them. Keep it by your nightstand and jot it down the moment you wake up, or else you're gonna forget about it. Like I do this all the time. I always forget. Um, and then the crystalline grid. Um, I feel like we're all placed around the world right now. Anybody who is of the light, like light workers that are going to be activated for going forward and helping with humanity. I keep seeing this in my visions. And so it's like, we're all placed in different areas and we connect, even though we don't, we're not aware of it, but it is cr creating this crystalline grid of light that is shifting the earth. So we can ascend and look at what I get right after the timeline jump. Oh my gosh. How, what have I been hearing for the past like four days? Jump, 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 jump. jump. Days jump. Yeah. So the timeline jump, um, meaning we're going into this new age of Aquarius. Boom. And Sorry. I just want to say, because this, um, this is going to be airing actually on my birthday. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put this on Twitter but I have been made fun of this since I was a kid. People said I came out looking like an alien. And I need to be <laughs> offended by it, but I'm not. So I'm going to show you guys the very first picture of me. Look at that alien baby. Such a cute alien baby. I you love it. You are cute, though. I have five pounds. Oh. Aww. I didn't get hair until I was like two, though. So, <laughs> like, I came here to shift the timeline from a higher dimension. <laughs> I don't want to be here. I was surprised I was one of those babies flicking off the camera. Like, I don't want to be here. <laughs> Speaking of hair, guys, I was born with three and a half inches of hair. Oh, I know. I like. I, I looked like an alien too, but I had literally like that much hair grown and they, they put it in a mohawk. The nurse put it in a mohawk. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was cute. I'll have to show that picture one of these days. Yeah. Yeah. Do. yeah. And then was, you guys can laugh at me. I was going to say too, with Steph's card of dreams too, like, like we said this whole time, like if you're not remembering your dreams, we're going through this too. Sometimes like if you're not remembering your dreams, you're just busy and things are about to open up. So just, just it's okay. There's no, I think that's the thing too, is we're all asking these questions like, well, what do I need to do next? What do I need to do next? Well, this is plot twist. This is the time when we let not, we don't, we take, we take full advantage of our own desires, our own visions. We, we choose these things, but at the end of the day, we have divine timing now at play. Now we're getting real divine in the here now too. I'm not saying like you just sit back and you watch. I'm saying you actively manifest and picture these beautiful things you want and you allow this to come in, but that's allowance. That's more divine feminine energy too. And we flow with the energy that's coming in versus trying to force the next step. Guys, I just got star family. 
and planetary guardian. Oh, I love that card. By the way. And honestly, like Whoa. if, if you have these ships above your head, I know I do with where I live. I, I feel very guarded by my star family. I don't know about you ladies, but I definitely, I know you, well, I know you guys do because I talked to you on the camera, but um, yeah, they're, they're also, I believe, helping with that crystalline grid that I just pulled as well. I feel like they're like a sky grid and we're like an earth grid kind of a thing. Let's solidify this. Let's do it. Let's How do we go. solidify it? Oh, let's go. Tower. Yeah, let's go. Tower. Bring awesome. it. Bring it. That's what I want for my birthday. Bring it out there. That's what I Hold want on. for my birthday. So All I want for my birthday voice? is my EBS. All I want for my birthday is a big gold tower. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Hey, Steph, you want to sing happy birthday to Bryce and then have the, have, have the collective? Come on. Happy birthday to Bryce. <laughs> happy birthday <laughs> to Bryce. Hit it. Let's go. That's it. Funny Tamara day. actually called me in the morning and I picked the phone up at like five o'clock in the morning and she was singing on the phone. I was like, Tamara, it's not until Friday. She's like, I know, but you're not going to be there on Friday. Are you? You're going to be out having fun. I was like, probably not. But <laughs> you're all on Zoom phone. with the ladies. But. I love Tamara. That was so funny. I said, oh, she's just singing to me. So oh, Tamara, Tamara, if you're that watching. so cute. I love you. Um, next love you, birthday, Tamara. which will be my my. My 40th birthday. We won't be on Zoom. We'll be partying together. Let's go. Let's go. Do this. Three of cups. Three of cups all the way. All right, ladies. Thank you so much for doing this today. Thank you guys, everybody out there who's watching. And if you do want to say a little birthday wish for me, just put it out there that we're ready for that tower moment because we want to move on to that new timeline. That's why we came here, damn it, is to get that new timeline. So let's do it. Let's freaking do it. So. <laughs> all right love you guys so much and we'll talk to you all soon <laughs> bye everybody